Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge O Levels Physics 5054. Today we have set our heart to solve a paper four, and we call it a, 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 a ATP alternative to practical. And we have selected May, June 2023, Physics 5054, 4 2 paper. This paper 4 or this ATP paper belongs from the zone 2. In this video, I'm going to present you the solution of this paper to best of my understanding and humble knowledge. So let's start and let's, let's start this paper. So here we go. Four zero five zero five four four two May June two thousand twenty three. One hour is allowed for this paper. The time the marks for this paper are forty. Here comes the first question. A student measures the capacity of a drinks cup by three different methods. So. The capacity of a cup is the maximum volume of liquid that it can hold. So method number one, the student measures the height H. Let me show you that diagram. Okay. The method number one is that the student measures the height H, small h, of the cup, the diameter, capital D, of the top of the cup, the diameter, small d, of the bottom of the cup, Figure 1.1 shows a full-size diagram of the cup. So this word is important. He said the full-size. This word is important. It's a full-size diagram. Okay. So what I will do, measure the cap height H, the diameter D, and the diameter small d of the, top of the cup in the diagram. So this word is important, measure. Meyer means with the, with the help of a scale, actually Meyer. So by using a scale, I will measure what is the value of this H, what is the value of this capital D, what is the value of this small d. So use your scale to measure these lengths. And the unit we are going to use is centimeter. So I have done this and I found this capital H to be 8.3 centimeter. The capital D, the diameter from the top of the cup, is 6.9 centimeter. And the small d, the diameter of the cup at the bottom, is 4.6 centimeter. So these are my answers. Okay. So then he says, uh, calculate the average uh, d diameter of the cup using your readings from the a first part and the equation okay so here i will put the i will substitute here the cap value of the capital d the value of the small d and then i will divide it with the two so i have done it let me show you okay so 6.9 plus 4.6 equals to divided by two so you will have 11.5 divided by two that will be 5.75 so the average diameter is 5.75 centimeter. So this is how you will do this. Very simple, the equation is given, you just have to substitute the values. In the third part, he says, calculate the value for the capacity V1 of the cup using this equation. Uh, using the equation, uh, volume will be equal to pi d average is square and into the height of the cup divided by the four. So you just have to substitute the value of the d average, the small h, and then do the calculation. So it will be pi multiply 5.75 whole square, multiply 8.3 divided by 4, and it will be 215 centimeter cube. So the volume is 215 centimeter cube. Okay, so then they say we have, this was the one method in which you measure the height of the cup, the diameter of the cup from the bottom, the diameter of the cup from the top, and then the equations were given by them, you calculated the volume of the cup or the capacity of the cup. So we, in the B part, we have method number two, to find the capacity of the cup. 
The student uses a length of string and a meter rule to determine the average circumference, capital C, of the cup. The student wraps some of the string five times around the cup, measures the length L of the string used. The, the, the length of the string used is 87.9 centimeter. Calculate the average circumference C of the cup. You see, you have wrapped the string five times around the cup. So that means in this length, we have five circumferences. So if you want to find out the circumference, you will divide this length with five and you will be able to calculate. So you see 87.9 divided by five and that will be 17.58. So you got 17.58 centimeter. 17.58 centimeter. Okay, so our answer is right. This is the answer. Okay, then we have, he says, uh, use your values of the small h and a first part and the c from the b first part to calculate a value for the capacity v2 of the cup using the equation. So now here a formula is given and in that formula you will put the value of the capital C, you will put the value of the small h and you will be able to calculate the volume of the cup. So here you can see I have done that 17.58 square multiply 8.3 divided by 4 pi. So you will get 204, 204 centimeter cube. 204 centimeter cube. 204 centimeter cube. So this is the answer. Okay, then we have method number three. The student fills a measuring cylinder with the water, up to 220 centimeter cube water. Pours water from the measuring cylinder into the cup until the cup is full. Records the new reading R on the measuring cylinder. So you have a measuring cylinder, it has some water, which is up to 220 centimeter cube. From here, you pour the water into the cup. When the cup is full, you stop. And then you check what is the reading on the measuring cylinder. And then you check how much is the difference of the volume in the measuring cylinder. Now, the difference is equal to the volume of the water which you have poured into the cup. And that is showing you the volume of the cup. So the first question is the, the water in the measuring cylinder was 220 centimeter cube. And now this is the reading in the what? Uh, the, uh, now this is the reading of the volume of the water in the measuring cylinder. And it looks like it is 26 centimeter cube. This reading is, this is 25. You see, this is, sorry, this is not 25. Uh, this is 20, this is 40. So it is 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. This is 32. This reading is how much? It is 32 centimeter cube so uh, from 220 we will subtract 32 so we will get how much is the this reading is 32 centimeter cube and then we will determine the volume of the water v3 in the cup so that will be the one water was how much 220 centimeter cube and now how much is left 32 centimeter cube the remaining water you have poured into that uh, cup. So we can tell, so this reading will be 32. So the volume of the cup, we are representing it with the V3. That will be 220 minus 32 and that will be 188. So 188 centimeter cube is the volume of the cup. This is the answer. So the D part, here we have the D part. He says, all three methods of determining the capacity of the drinks cup gives uh, give values which are approximate. State one reason why the volume calculated in the method number two 
and the one reason why the volume calculated in the method three are not accurate okay so in the method number two because you are wrapping um, around the cup and you found the circumference of the cup and you use that formula to find the volume so you see if you look at the shape of the cup if you look at the shape of the cup let me show you the shape of the cup yeah this is the shape of the cup you can see here at the bottom the circumference is smaller and at the top the circumference is larger so when you found that circumference its value depends upon from where on the cup along the height you try to find out the circumference because the cup's circumference along the height of the cup is not uniform at the bottom the circumference is smaller and at the top the circumference is larger so you see this is uh, one thing which will create uh, inaccuracy in the method number three you poured water into the cup from a measuring cylinder so why it will it will be not that much accurate maybe maybe you have underfilled the cup you have not filled it to its brims and that is also possible that you might when you are pouring the water into the cup you might overfill it and some of the water might spill on the table so these practically these can be the problems let me check and let me show you what i have written in the Okay, the circumference, method number two, what, what, what are the reasons circumference of the cup is not uniform over the height of the cup. In the method number three, where you, are, you pour the water into the cup, cup might have been underfilled. It's possible you might have underfilled it. It's possible that you have overfilled it and some water has spilled. So these are some reasons. So you see a uh, marking scheme is showing up on your screen. You can pause the video. You can take your time and read these reasons. So there are a lot of reasons for, uh, for method number two to be not accurate. And also there are a lot of reasons for the method number three to be not uh, that accurate. So you can pause the video and take your time. <clears throat> you just have to give here one one reason. So now we are on question number two. A student investigates the effective resistance of different combinations of resistors and lamps in circuit. The student sets up the circuit shown in the figure 2.1. So here you have a power supply. With this power supply, we have in series connected an ammeter and parallel to the battery parallel to the power supply and parallel to this resistor parallel to these two also you can say we have connected a voltmeter so the student sets up the circuit uh, shown in the figure 2.1 so these two are connected in series with each other but these two are parallel to this third one the student closes the switch measures the potential difference V1 across the resistors and current I1 in the circuit opens the switch. The readings on the voltmeter and the ammeter are shown in the figure 2.2 and figure 2.3. So what's the reading on the voltmeter? So their question is record the potential difference V1 and the current I1 shown in the figure 2.2 and the figure 2.3. So how much is this reading? This is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9. .2 so this reading is how much? 2.9 volt. And how much is the reading here? Here you can see it is 0 0.4 and this is 0 0.5. So this is 0 0.46. 0 0.46 ampere. So let me check from here. I have noted down these values 
and here you can see 2.9 volt and 0 0.46 ampere. Calculate the second part is calculate the effective resistance R1 of the combination of resistors using the equation. So um, I want to find out R1 value. The formula is given. Here you have to substitute the value of the V1 and the I1. The V1 value is 2.9 volt and the I1 value is 0 0.46 ampere. Just put these values here and you divide the V1 value with the I1 value, you will get the resistance of the combination. So uh, let me show you, I have done that. Okay, so R1 will be equals to the V1 value is 2.9 volt and the I1 is 0 0.46 ampere. So when you will divide 2.9 with the 0 0.46, you will get 6.30, 6.30 ohm. He says, suggest why the switch is opened after the readings of the potential difference and current have been taken. You see, uh, if you um, if you keep the switch closed for a longer time, you see, you close the switch immediately, you note down what is the reading on the voltmeter, what is the reading on the ammeter, and you open the switch. You do not keep that switch closed. Why? You see, when the current flows uh, through the circuit, this produces heating. And this can cause the heating of the lead wire. This can cause the reading, uh, heating of the resistors. And when the heating of the resistors will take place, so the value on the voltmeter and the ammeter will change. Another reason can be that uh, when you have taken the readings immediately close the uh, open the switch sorry why so that your the power supply do not run out so i have written if switch is kept closed due to flow of current heat will be produced and it will change the resistance it will change the resistance it will change of the circuit i mean and it will change the it will prevent the overheating of the wire or the circuit and the battery will run run for more and more experiments if you keep the switch closed for a very long time the battery will run out it will be discharged i mean here we have he says the student is the b part of question number two the student rearranges the circuit so that the resistors are connected as shown in the figure 2.4. Close the switch, measure the potential difference V2 and the current I2, open the switch. Now the resistors are connected parallel to each other. The new readings are the V2 is 2.8 volt and the I2 value is 0 0.88 ampere. Calculate the effective resistance R2 of the combination of the resistors using the equation. Here it's very simple. The V2 value is given, the I2 value is given. You just have to put them in that given formula and you will be able to calculate the value of the R2. Okay, so he says, record your answer on the answer line. Write down the value of the two times of the R2. Okay, so first of all, we will calculate the R2 value. So the R2 value will be uh, 2.8 divided by 0 0.88 and the R2 value will be 3.18. So the R2 value will be 3.2 ohm. Now if you double this, uh, 2 R2 will be 2 times multiplied 3.2 and that will be 6.4 ohm. So the R2 value is 3.2 ohm and the 2 times of the R2 value is 6.4 ohm. This is the answer. Our answer is right, sir.
if the C part, if the resistors are identical, theory suggests that the R1 is equal to 2 times the R2. Two quantities can be considered to be equal within the limits of experimental accuracy if their values are within 10% of each other. State whether the results indicate that the resistors are identical. Support your uh, statement with a calculation. So we have to support our calculation and we have to show that the value of the R1 and the value of the two times of the R2 are within the 10% of each other. So let's let's do the calculation. Okay. Now very simple. You see R1 value is 6.3 and 2 times R2 is 6.4. So I will take the 10% of the 6.3 and that is 0 0.63. So in this R1 value, I will add 0 0.63 and I will subtract 0 0.63 in the 6.3. So it means that the upper value is 6.93 and the lower value is 5.67. So the, uh, from 5.67 to 6.93, you are within the 10% of the experimental accuracy of the R1 6.3 ohm. So you see the R2 value, the R2 value is uh, 2 times R2 value is 6.4. So 6.4 is between these two range, this range. So 6.4 is in this range. So that means 6.4 is within the 10% uh, experimental accuracy. So the, yes, they are, uh, yeah, yes, R1 and the 2 times R2 is same. 2 times R2 value is within the 10% of the limits of the experimental accuracy of the R1. R1. This is the answer. The D part. The student repeats the experiment in A and B, but replaces the resistors with the lamps. He obtains the following results. The effective, the effective resistance R3 of the combination of the lamps connected in the figure 2.1 is 5.2 ohm. The effective resistance R4 of the combination of the lamps connected in the figure 2.4 is 3.4 ohm. The teacher explains that the resistance of the lamp of the lamp filaments changes due to a heating effect and therefore R3 is not equal to 2 times R4. Suggest so one observation that the student makes while doing the experiment that supports the teacher's explanation. You see, uh, they, they think that the resistances of the filament lamps in both the cases will be different. How do we know that when, whenever the lamps are connected in series or in parallel or a combination, you will observe that their brightness is different from each other. In each combination, the lamps will have a different brightness, which means uh, that uh, their resistances are different. Brightness of the lamp is different from each other in both the circuits. Okay, we have the E part. He says the student extends the investigation using a different combination of the three lamps uh, the, to the two combinations already used in the A part and the B part. Complete the circuit diagram in the figure 2.5 to show a third way of connecting three lamps between X and Y. Okay, so we have to connect them differently. So here they were connected parallel to each other here two were uh, in series with each other with parallel to the third one. 
So one very simplest, another way of connecting these three wires, uh, these three resistors, is that the three resistors are in series with each other. That combination was not there. So this is my answer. There, are, there can be other combinations. Okay. But I have connected them in, you know, in series with each other. Three lamps in series. Okay. You can take your time with this marking scheme. Okay, we have question number three. It says, a student investigates the image formed by a converging lens. The student arranges the apparatus shown in the figure 3.1. So here you have a screen. Here we have a support, wooden support, and with it we have a wide screen. Here we have a holder, and this holder we have a converging lens. The distance between the converging lens and this card is U. In this card, we have a small hole, triangular object. So we have a triangular uh, opening in it. Behind here, on the left side of this hole, we have put a lamp. And this lamp is connected to a power supply. So here, in this slit, which is in the shape of a triangle, its image will be formed here. The illuminated, the illuminated triangular object is shown full size in the figure 3.2. Measure and record the height, capital H, of the triangular object. So I will measure this height. And this height, according to when I measured it, is 2.6 centimeter. The question number three, B part. The student switches on the lamp and places the lens a distance u, which is 20 centimeter from the triangular object, adjust the position of the screen until a sharp focused image of the triangular object is formed on the screen. The image is shown full size in the figure 3.1, 3.3. So this is measure the height small h of the image on the screen shown figure 3.3 on the page number 11. So we have to measure the height. So you will measure this height with the help of a scale. Then he says calculate the value of the 1 by h. Give your answer to two significant figures. Whatever is the value of the h, you will reciprocate it and you will note down the answer here. Add your values of the h and 1 by h to the table 3.1. The student repeats for different values of u and records all his readings in the table. Okay. So when I measured the height of that triangle, triangular, this, I measured it, and it is 7.8 centimeter. Then we calculated the value of the 1 by h. So it will be 1 by 7.8 and that will be 0 0.128, which is approximately, 0, approximately 0 0.13 centimeter inverse. Okay, then he says, add your values for h and 1 by h to the table 3.1. So we will put those values here and here. The h is measured in centimeters and this is measured in centimeter inverse. So I just put those values here. 
So 7.8, 0.13, 3.9, when you do 1 divided by 3.9, that is 0 0.26. 2.6 divided by, if you, you 1 divided by 2.6, that will be 0 0.38. 1 divided by 1.6, that will be 0 0.63. And 1 divided by 1.1, that will be 0 0.91. So this is the value which I wrote there, and this is its reciprocal. These values are already given, so I just simply put their found their reciprocals. The unit here is centimeter. The unit here is centimeter inverse. He says complete the headers by adding the appropriate units. Com calculate the remaining values of the one by h, and then add, then add them in the table three point one. The screen in a square sheet of the white card of the side 10 centimeter. The screen is a square sheet of white card of the side 10 centimeter. Calculate and look at the data in the table 3.1 and suggest why the student does not use values of the U which are less than 20 centimeter. So when you go less than 20 centimeter, the height of that image will become too large. Maybe more than the height of that, uh, you know, height of the screen, which was only 10 centimeter long. So if U is less than 20 centimeter, height of the image will be longer than 10 centimeter, or it should it will be longer than the side of the screen. Okay, it says uh, E part on the grid provided plot a graph of 1 by H on the Y axis against U on the X axis. Start both the axes from the origin. Draw the line of the best fit. So here we have that graph is given. I will, I have to uh, plot the graph and because the u value is going from the u value is from 20 to 50 so i have i have taken 1 cm equals to 5 so it will be 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 And the 1 by H values are here, 0 0.13, 0 0.26, 0 0.38, 0 0.63, and 0 0.91. So I will represent this on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, we have taken 1 centimeter represents 0 0.1, 0 0.1, I mean. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Then he says... Calculate, the first question is calculate the gradient M of your line. Show all working and indicate on the graph the values you use. So on my graph, you can see I have drawn this triangle. So I noted I've taken this point, its coordinates are 25, 0 0.24. And I have taken this point, its coordinates are 50, 0 0.91. So I'm taking these values. Calculate the gradient M of your line, show all working and indicate on the graph the values you use. So if you want to find out the gradient of this graph, so I will take two points on this graph. I have taken 50 comma 0.91 and 25,0.24. So the gradient will be 0 0.24 minus 0 0.91, and the whole thing will be divided by 25 minus 5. 
So the gradient is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the gradient is minus 0 0.67 divided by minus 25. So it will be 0 0.027. So the gradient of this graph is 0 0.027. So this is the answer. So we will plot these points. These points are 20 comma 0 0.13, 25 comma 0 0.26, 30 comma 0 0.38 and 40 comma 0 0.63 and 50 comma 0 0.91. So you will plot these points on this grid. And this will be your line of the best fit. He says calculate the focal length of the lens. Use your values of the capital H from the A part and the equation F is equal to 1 by M H. So F will be equal to 1 divided by the M value is 0 0.027 and the H value is 2.6. So when I will put these values, it will be 1 divided by 0 0.027 into 2.6. So you will have 1 divided by 0 0.0702 and that will be 14.2 centimeters. So it will be 14.2 centimeter. Then their uh, last part is, he says, when measuring the height of the image on the screen, the student's hand and the ruler obstruct the light from the object and prevent it from reading the screen. So just one improvement to the apparatus used by the student to overcome this problem. So the method is very simple. You see, when you try to find out the height of the image formed on the screen, your hand will come between the lamp and the screen. So how you get rid of this solution? One method is use a translucent paper as screen. And when the image will be formed on the one side of the translucent paper, that image can be also seen from the other side of the paper. So if it is translucent material, then the, the image formed by this lens on the screen will be also visible from, from this side of the white screen. So without obstructing the light on, falling on the white screen, you will be able to measure accurately the height of that thing. Another uh, good way is that you use a screen on which a uh, graduation is done on which the heights are measured are written i mean so by just looking at the screen you will be able to tell what is the height or what is the length of that uh, you know that uh, that line or that image He says when measuring the height of the image on the screen, the student's hand and okay. So just one improvement to the apparatus used by the student to overcome this problem. So I have suggested you use a translucent uh, screen and measure the height of the image from backside of the screen. So I have given you only one solution. Okay, so our answer is the right. So we are going to the next question. He says, question number four is a planning question. Here you have to plan an experiment. A student investigates the time taken for ice cubes. So we have to find out the time taken, uh, investigates the time taken for the ice cubes to melt when they are pl placed in a beaker of hot water. Okay. Plan an experiment to investigate how the thickness 
the thickness of the cardboard insulation around a beaker affects the time taken for the ice cubes in the beaker to melt. So basically, we are going to investigate the relationship between uh, the time taken for the ice cubes to melt and the thickness of the cardboard, which is insulation, which you have wrapped around a beaker. The following apparatus is available. 250 cubic centimeter beaker, supply of the hot water, supply of the ice cubes, thermometer, stopwatch, supply of two millimeter thick cardboard sheet. In your plan, you should explain briefly how to carry out the investigation, state the key variables to keep constant, draw a table with the column headings to show how to display the readings, explain how to use your readings to reach a conclusion. So this place is given for writing the answer and this is the last, okay. So what I will do, I will take hot water and I will check what is its uh, initial temperature. I will wrap uh, uh, insulation around that beaker which has the hot water and I will put uh, ice cubes in it. And I will start my stopwatch and I will note down how much time the ice cubes takes to melt. Then we have put two layers of the insulation around that cup, pour the water out of that cup, put two insulations around that cup, then again pour the hot water, which has the same initial temperature, into this beaker, which has insulation around it, and note down the time taken when you add ice cubes into this cup, start your stopwatch, and note down how much it takes, how much time it takes to melt the ice cubes. Then you increase the thickness of the insulation around the cup. For example, now you, you, you can wrap four insulation layers around the cup, pour hot water in it, make sure the initial temperature of the hot water is same as in the previous um, question or previous uh, readings and then put some same amount of the ice cubes into the water and note down how much time with the help of a stopwatch note down how much time it takes to melt the ice cubes so this is the diagram of the beaker which has the hard wa hot water and i have put a thermometer to measure the temperature this is the beaker uh, in which you will pour this hot water you will make sure that the initial temperature every time you do this experiment is same and then you put ice cubes in it and you note down how much time it takes the ice to ice cubes to melt. So my uh, answer, I've tried to write this answer. Wrap a layer of the cardboard insulation around the beaker. Add hot water in it. Note the initial temperature of the hot water. Put ice cubes in the beaker. Start the stopwatch and note the time taken for the ice cubes to melt. Repeat the same procedure by adding one more layer of the insulation around the beaker. Following key variables should be same. Amount of the hot water, initial temperature of the hot water, beaker with the beakers which you are using, the room temperature and the size and the number of the ice cubes, initial temperature of the ice cubes. So you see the initial temperature of the hot water, initial temperature of the whatever is the initial temperature of the ice cubes, that should remain same whenever you repeat it. So then you will draw this table and in this table you will have number of the layers of the insulation and the time to melt the cubes in that hot water. Plot a graph between time to melt ice cubes and number of layers of insulation around beaker. Time will be on the y-axis and the number of the layers of the insulation on the x-axis. By looking at the shape of the graph, the relation between time to melt ice cubes and layers of insulation around beaker can be 
concluded. So this is my answer. Let me show you. This is. So we're talking about question number four. So here you go. This is the diagram which I've tried to make. And this is the writing. I have written that experiment. You can pause the video and you can take your time. You can pause the video and take your time with this. This is the table which we will draw. And this is the end of this experiment. Let me show you the marking scheme. So on your screen, the question number four is showing up. <clears throat> you can pause the video and take your time with this marking scheme. Uh, it's very important to read the marking scheme. It's very, very, very important. So, uh, my dear students, uh, we have reached the end of this paper. Uh, there were four questions, and the last one was the uh, planning question. And there are not much planning questions available for practice. So, I hope that I have tried to explain you the concepts of this, uh, uh, th these questions, how you do these, how you write their answers. I have tried my best to explain to you, and we have also used the marking scheme. It's very important to use the marking scheme because I, from the marking scheme, I know that what kind of the answer the Cambridge wants. So if you find this video useful, if you find this video helpful, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel, and also Share the link of this video onto your Facebook, onto your WhatsApp, onto your um, uh, Twitter account, onto your X, onto your Twitter, and onto your LinkedIn. So wherever it is possible, please share the link of this video onto your Instagram especially. Because you see, when you will share the link of this video, um, this will help me to promote my channel. I think it's a great blessing for me that I can make these videos and I can reach out the, to the students around the world who might not have that much access to face-to-face -face access with the teachers. And this video might be helpful to them. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.